When you're a beginner PC builder making your first gaming rig, it's astoundingly easy to get overwhelmed by the sheer scope of gaming hardware available to you. And to be frank, no matter how good a PC you end up making, you will come to realize that maybe some other piece of hardware would have fit better. Even if everything is on point, newer and better hardware will get released soon that might make you wish you had put off this venture. Experienced builders don't let this get to them, but novices can be bothered by this, which they shouldn't since it's inevitable. Now don't take this as us encouraging you to just build your PC with whatever components you find first, since it's not going to be perfect anyway. Perfection may be unreachable, but as in all things, we should strive towards it when building our PCs. Even our custom builds that you can check out in the description get regularly updated to ensure our fans always get the best bang for their buck. That's why in today's video, we want to chip in and help out novice builders by dissecting all of the differences between the Intel Xeon and Intel Core series of CPUs. So without any further ado, let's begin. You probably know at this point that the Intel Core and the AMD Ryzen series of CPUs are the most popular gaming CPUs out there. But as you start descending further down the rabbit hole, you quickly learn that these aren't the only CPU brands on the shelves. And the brand that seems to get the most traction with the newly initiated builders is Intel Xeon. Why? Well, Xeon CPUs have got more cores than the core CPUs, ironically, and they also cost more. These two metrics can easily be mistaken for indicators of better gameplay performance, but that isn't the case. Each series of CPUs is made with a specific purpose and target audience in mind. So let's see how the Core and the Xeon series compare. The Intel Core CPU has been the company's primary mainstream CPU brand ever since the late 2000s. The CPUs in this series are divided into groups that indicate their performance. We have the i3 CPUs that are made for budget builds, the i5 CPUs made for mid-range builds, and the i7 CPUs made for high-end builds. Recently, we've also seen the rise of mainstream i9 CPUs as the high-end enthusiast solution for those who, like Chancellor Palpatine, want unlimited power. The Intel Xeon CPUs, however, have been around since the late 90s and feature many models that we can't easily categorize. But the thing is, they were never meant for desktop PCs. That's the reason you probably never heard of them until the time came to research CPUs for your own build. The Xeon processors are designed with servers and workstations in mind. At the time of this recording, there are four series of Xeon CPUs. Xeon E, which is aimed at entry-level servers and workstations, which is aimed at the micro-server market, Xeon W, aimed primarily at workstations, and Xeon Scalable Processors, which are themselves subdivided into bronze, silver, gold, and platinum solutions that are suitable for many different purposes and span a massive price range. Range. So now that we know what the intended purpose of both Xeon and Core CPUs is, we can understand why the differences between them exist and look at them with a more critical eye. First up, we have to discuss the differences in core count. Aside from the price, this is the most noticeable difference between Xeon and Core CPUs. The core count of Core CPUs has changed over the years, but as of the 9th generation, i3s have 4 cores, i5s have 6, and i7s have 8. i9 CPUs also have 8 physical cores, but they actually have 16 logical cores thanks to the implementation of hyperthreading. Next-gen CPUs are set to retain their core count but receive hyperthreading across the board, which will essentially double their processing power. The 10th-gen i9 CPUs will also receive two new physical cores since they otherwise wouldn't be any different than the 10th-gen i7s, bringing their total core count to 10 cores and 20 threads. We've left links in the description to videos where we explain individual CPU specs, so check them out if you're having a little trouble following this. In either case, 20 cores is a ridiculous amount. After all, high-end gaming PCs do perfectly fine with 8 cores. But even this number is paltry compared to the Xeon's maximum core count of 28 cores and 56 threads. This isn't to say that all Xeon CPUs are like this. Some of the cheapest ones only feature 4 or 6 cores and no hyperthreading. And there's everything in between. 
But try and remember that most of these numbers are ridiculous for gaming. They're just too much. Also, let's consider the benefit multiple cores have on gaming. More cores equals better multitasking. That's the benefit of multiple cores on everything, not just gaming. The leap from single-core CPUs to multi-core CPUs has opened up many possibilities for developers to create more complex games, and we are currently enjoying the fruits of these possibilities. But games are designed to perform optimally on a certain number of cores, and beyond that number, you simply don't see a significant bump in performance. And guess what? Developers aren't designing games with 50 or 25 or even 10 cores in mind. This kind of processing power is great for professional software and server use, but it's simply wasted on gaming. And it's not like you'll just be overpaying but still getting great results. Gaming favors strong single-core performance, and Xeon processors generally have a lower clock speed than core processors. That's right, buying an Intel Xeon processor would not only be significantly more expensive, but it could easily lead to worse performance than you would get on a much cheaper Intel Core processor. The Core series leads in terms of both clock speed and overclocking potential, provided that the model ends in a K, signifying that it's unlocked and eligible for overclocking. Also that it has proper cooling, but we digress. The point is that Xeon processors run at a lower clock speed, now, you may be wondering, why is this? There are good reasons for it. For starters, Xeon CPUs have a higher TDP than core CPUs, which means that they generate more heat. The higher the clock speed, the more heat gets generated, which is why they need to have clock speeds that we would call mediocre for gaming. But there's also the fact that stability and power efficiency are way more important for servers and workstations than pure processing power. This is why Xeon CPUs have lower clock speeds. They're supposed to stay turned on and run without any breaks indefinitely and do so without any hiccups. Keeping the clock speeds lower helps with this significantly. This is also why Xeon CPUs come with more cache memory, since maintaining stability while accessing relevant data to juggle multiple tasks reflects much better on a server's overall performance than it would on a gaming PC's performance. Next up, let's look at RAM. Xeon CPUs have three major advantages over core CPUs when it comes to RAM, and these are higher maximum capacity, more memory channels, and ECC memory support. If you thought i7 and i9 CPUs were impressive, with their maximum support for 128GB of RAM and two memory channels, you're not even ready to see what number Xeon CPUs can handle. To ease you into this, let's just say that the cheapest Xeon CPU currently on the market, the $230 Xeon Bronze 3104, supports up to 768 gigabytes of RAM and six memory channels. This not only allows for more RAM to be installed, but it also bumps up the bandwidth quite significantly. Don't let the numbers fool you, however. 16GB is more than plenty for modern gaming on highest graphics, so this shouldn't even be on your radar when buying a CPU. We just wanted to illustrate how wide the gap is. As for Xeon's third major advantage, the ECC memory, this again helps you with maintaining stability. ECC stands for Error Checking and Correction, and what this does is it eliminates the most common cause of software crashes, which is corrupted memory data. And finally, while it may not be a spec, we can't end this video without talking about the price. The price of Intel Core CPUs generally ranges from between $100 to $200 for the i3 CPUs, from $200 to $300 for the i5 CPUs, and from $300 to $400 for the i7 CPUs. And these prices aren't likely to change even as newer generation Core CPUs get released. But as for Xeon CPUs, they cover an enormous spectrum. The cheaper ones can cost just as much as i5 CPUs, or even less, but the more expensive ones can reach astronomical prices. For example, the Intel Xeon Platinum 8180 costs $15,000. 15000 This is a stupidly large amount, but it really drives home the idea that the processors aren't made for gaming. And we should also remember this even when dealing with the cheapest Xeon CPUs. 
And that about does it for this video. In summation, while both the Intel Xeon and Intel Core series of CPUs may be made by the same company, they're made for entirely different purposes. If you need a CPU for gaming, the Core series should be your only choice, at least on the Intel side of things. We're not ready to start the Intel vs AMD debate this late in the video, but you can check out a whole video dedicated to it in the description. Xeon CPUs are best reserved for workstations and servers, and their specs reflect that. It's not just the price of the CPU that determines its performance. The intended use also plays a large part that simply cannot be understated. We'd call buying a Xeon CPU for gaming tantamount to buying a straw for diving. You know, like the ones cartoon characters use when they're trying to hide. It can get the job done, but if the point is to dive, buy proper diving equipment. In any case, we hope you found this video helpful. If you have, let us know by giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to enable notifications. We upload a new video every week, so stay tuned for the next one. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.